One of the things that I tested on Intel's 12th generation chips was their P-Core and E-Core performance independently. So I think it's worth seeing how the new 13th gen chips fare, starting with this 13600K. I've also included a full set of benchmarks for the 12600K to see how much of an improvement the new 13th gen chips offer, and spoilers, it's a lot. But I want to preface these numbers with a bit of a disclaimer. These hybrid CPUs still have plenty of bugs. None were complete deal breakers, but take my 12600K results for example. Here is the peak power consumption figures that I recorded. To remind you, the power limit of the 12600K is 150 watts and yet it's just drawing 105, while still getting the same performance as I got in my original review. The same goes for the 13600K, which peaked at 150 watts, despite its power limit now being 181. There are a number of, of little bugs like that and performance related issues that still exist on this relatively new platform. Also, to make it clear, I'm using an ASUS Z690 Strix E motherboard with 32GB of DDR5 5600 RAM, an RTX 3060 and a Corsair H150i cooler for my testing here. Right, I'll start with Cinebench R23 multi-thread, which has plenty of interesting results. The 13600K's minor core and major clock speed bump means that the P cores are only just shy of the entire 12600K's result. The 13th gen E cores are a touch faster than the 12th gen's, even if you were to double the 12th gen results to match the same core count. In fact, a comparably spec 12th gen chip with 8 of its E cores would need 17% more performance to match the 13600K, although chip for chip, the 13600K is 134% faster in the E core department. Something that's also interesting is if you add up the P core and E core performance of each chip, on the 12th gen chip you get almost identical performance to stock, with all cores enabled at once, which makes sense, right? But on the 13th gen chip you get about 3% less performance. Another bug perhaps? Moving on to single threaded, it seems like there is only a 3% improvement from the 12th gen to 13th gen P cores here which is a lot smaller of a gap than I would expect, especially since in stock versus stock configurations, it's more like a 6% gap. But on the eCore front, there seems to be a more reasonable or considerable 11% improvement. In Blender and the BMW scene, the eCores in the 13600K help decrease the render time by a full minute compared to the P-Cores alone, versus a, a more modest 40 second gap on the 12600K. The same over twice as fast gap applies to the E-Core results too, with the 12600K running 132% slower. In Gooseberry, the spread closes a little, with the 3600K's P-Cores coming in within 5% of the 12600K's stock performance. As for Premiere Pro, that suffers pretty considerably, running just on the P-Cores on either chip, with the 13600K dropping from 953 points down to just 802. Surprisingly though, the 13600K's E-Cores aren't far off the 12600K's P-Core results, with 612 versus 551 points there. After Effects refused to complete on either E-Core only run for me, but its performance wasn't down much from stock on the P-Cores alone. That makes me think that After Effects isn't making much or any use of the P-Cores in regular operation. Finally, in Photoshop, there was a slight drop going from stock to the P-Core only on both, although a, a healthy lead for the 13th gen. In fact, the 13600K's P cores outperformed the 12600K in stock 10 core configuration, which is mighty impressive. As for gaming, I'm going to stick with 1080p results here, with CSGO being the best example of lower performance on the slower cores. 
The 13600K P cores performed on par with the stock configuration, actually slightly higher or slightly exceeding stock, whereas the 12600K isn't quite as good when running just on the P cores alone. Interestingly, even on the 13th gen E cores, you can still get pretty decent, or at least a pretty decent average result, albeit with a pretty stuttery experience overall, shown nicely by the 1% low figures, being almost a third of the P core result. Compare that to the 12600K's E cores though, and you get almost half again. Ouch. Cyberpunk delivers a frankly incredible result, which is that Eight E cores on the 13600K offer more performance than the stock 12600K. The same as the stock 13600K results, and the same as the 12600K's P cores. In fact, looking at the results, I wouldn't be too surprised to find that the E cores are doing a lot of the work at stock or in the stock configuration, as both the 12th and 13th gen chips see a healthy performance improvement with their E cores disabled, with the 13600K jumping almost 10 FPS up on the 12600K, uh, and the 12600K being more reasonable at just 3 FPS, although still seeing a 10 FPS higher result in the 1% lows. And if you're doubting the accuracy of that result, as honestly I was, Shadow of the Tomb Raider here confirms it again, as the 13600K's E cores ran at functionally stock performance while the P cores alone ran faster. Testing with a 3060 might be a, a limiting factor here, or at least you know limiting the gains that each of the, the options can offer, but the fact that the P-Cores can eke out more performance than stock is pretty impressive. That isn't the same with the 12600K though, with its E-Cores suffering considerably, although the P-Cores alone do still net a better overall result. And finally, Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, finally breaks the trend with the E-Cores matching the stock performance, with a significant but not catastrophic dip from that. The P-Cores alone though do still offer more performance than stock configurations on both chips, so it seems like disabling the E-Cores is still a useful tool to get more gaming performance out of these hybrid chips. Kinda makes you wonder why they bother to include them for these gaming focused chips anyway. So to wrap up, the 13600K is a considerably faster chip than last gen. Even excluding the doubled E-Cores, across the board you get more performance. Even in gaming with a, a relatively limiting RTX 3060 GPU, you still get more performance than last gen. Hell, even some of the E-Core only results were just as fast here. That is impressive for sure. In compute performance, the P-Cores are around 12% faster on their own, and the E-Cores are not only twice as fast, thanks to doubling them, but are more like 130% faster. And that's possible with the older Z690 and B650 boards too, and hell, even DDR4 RAM if you want. Of course, the, the faster the GPU you have, the bigger of a, a difference you'll see as well, especially in gaming and especially down at 1080p. As a final note on this launch, I want to mention that until <laughs> literally seconds before filming this video, I had none of AMD's Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, nor a, a high enough end GPU to do overly meaningful results, hence choosing to go on the, the tuning and RTX 3060 option instead. I now have a system from CyberPower complete with an RTX 4090 and all of AMD's new Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, so you can look forward to plenty more videos on especially the higher end chips with an unimpeded GPU. So as always, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that, because there's a lot to come. With all of that said, I would actually love to hear what you think about these new chips in the comments down below. Are these chips that you would get yourself? Are you impressed by how much of a performance improvement there is going from 12th to 13th gen? And what do you think about the P-Core versus E-Core performance? As always, uh, like I said, if you want to see more of these videos, you can hit the subscribe button. There'll be plenty more on the end cards, including the 13600K overclocking video, if you haven't seen that already. Feel free to check that out. And if you want to check out these new chips or the old ones, I'll leave some links to them in the description down below. 
If you want to support the channel and uh, ideally get me access to some of these uh, new stuff, uh, new chips, new cards and all that sort of stuff, uh, a little bit faster just by buying them instead of having to wait for you know people like system integrators to send me them because AMD won't, feel free to check out the uh, YouTube membership options, the uh, Patreon options, or uh, even just using the affiliate links that don't cost you anything extra but support me in these videos and this channel and all that sort of stuff. Uh, feel free to take a look at those. Otherwise, that's kind of it. Hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.